or is it not a clear to you that you're retrieving 1.5 trillion naira from fuel subsidy mm -hmm. and you're retrieving it are you going to retrieve it and disperse it to these poor masses that is because the same people who can afford the fuel sorry who are supposedly enjoying the fuel subsidy that they can afford to pay for mm -hmm. are will still be able to afford the, the things that have gone up already in prices and the poor masses may not be able to for example sorry to stop here for example the minimum wage is eighteen thousand naira. i'm just being, going to bring in a scenario here a school is paying that was paying less than twenty thousand naira for school fees suddenly shoots up their school fees to two hundred and fifty thousand naira, mm. and you expect the man who is earning eighteen thousand naira to train his three children or one child in that school yes and yet Fuel subsidy is going. And yes. you still expect this man to pay house rent, to pay transportation, pay Nepal bills, that the prices are going up. Yes. How would you expect this man on 18,000 naira to cope? Yes, because you are making the assumption that everybody keeps making that the only thing that happens is that increase in prices. I'm saying to you that prices will be increasing and we will be recovering a lot of money which has gone to people who ought not to have it. Now, that is where the spokesman for the common man, for the poor man, should actually put their focus, not on the subsidy itself, but on the savings that will be recovered from the subsidy. Where will it be applied? Because mm -hmm. if you keep on talking about the subsidy and you keep on uh, making this uh, presentation or you stand for this position that we should continue to subsidize, you are absolutely condemning the poor man, the common man, to a horrible ex a, a existence. Okay, can we say, away please, from please, the subsidy? No, no, let's, let's not move away. Just let me uh, make this point very quickly. That money has to be recovered. And once that money is recovered, that is where the spokesman of the common man would focus upon. This is the money that has been recovered. Prices are rising here. Cost of living is rising. How are we going to use one? 0.5 trillion to ameliorate those rises in prices. Have you heard that? Have you heard, sorry, Nyota, have you heard um, journalists or even people, commentators, columnists ask that question? Where exactly or how is this going to be applied? Have you heard the response of there, government? There to are that? so many questions that are floating in the air, and we cannot say the question lies there and we cannot address the issue. It's a question that faces all Nigerians. If we have an inefficient system where monies that are meant for common people are being misdirected in terms of how it's supplied, what do we do? Do we continue to point at it to say that it is an anomaly here, or we take measures to ensure that we? bring that money and redirect it within the economy so that it goes where it's supposed to go. Now, okay. Captain, so, the uh, reason, why, this the reason why I raise this again yeah. is because if you look at the argument for and, you know, against fuel subsidy removal, it's it's been such that so far so good. It seems the government has not been able to tell us clearly how or what they intend to do with the savings once they're able to retrieve it. I mean, uh, we've started with how fuel subsidy came into being, and even that is very questionable. When Professor Dam, Tam David West came around, he said even the entire process, the entire scenario itself, the fact that fuel subsidy started was a fraud in itself. It was meant to reward that. And that's something I don't know if you'd like to comment on. Would you like to comment on that? Comment on the, what? The process, the reason why fuel subsidy had to start in the very first place, yeah. that the refineries were systematically killed just so that government people or friends of government could be rewarded. It was a reward system. I don't, I don't really understand how that could be. You Talking about the issue of refineries and why we don't have enough refineries to uh, produce enough fuel for people, it's really um, a tautological question, if you like. Because we have this uh, uh, regime where we regulate the volumes that can be uh, brought in, we regulate the price at which it can be sold. Refineries are not cheap devices. They are very expensive uh, equipments to buy. But they are not more store. expensive than the 1.3 trillion that no, we've no, spent please, over the years. Me, no. yeah. We're not really uh, fighting a battle of words here. I really want us to look at the issues. You go to a bank to borrow money to, um, to establish your refinery. The bank wants to know that there is a cash flow, in what's cash flow from which you can amortize that uh, money that you have borrowed. But if you have a system where a third party, who's not the market, can dictate the volumes that you can uh, refine and the price at which you can sell. You would never have any refineries. That's why we have more than 30 refinery licenses. And every time they confront this question, they go back home and nobody's going to lend them money uh, to go and establish a business where it isn't the market or your capacity to produce at a certain price or your marketing skills to be able to sell it. It is a third party, a bureaucrat's discretion, I can say, 
produce so much and sell so much. Well, it's, it's a sure way of killing uh, enthusiasm for anybody who has uh, resources to invest in the refining well, business. The refineries that we have, yeah. is, it, is it this third party that systematically killed them or sent them to... No, the refineries that we have, we have government-owned refineries. We don't have private sector-owned refineries. Okay. And you understand that government has no business in running businesses. Okay, so that's so, why the refineries have, have sort of like gone dead. Well, you can reach your own conclusions. I mean, if uh, things are done on a political basis, where the word political is a euphemism for explaining things that cannot be explained according to the market or according to technology, then you understand why those uh, places are not well, working. Well, it's quite good that you're here because I'm quite sure people have been concerned about all of this when we saw the public debate uh, uh, kind of uh, with the, the Senate committee there. Uh, everyone thought uh, it was going to be something that it will come to understand. But at the end of it all, people are still talking about this fuel subsidy debate. Aren't you worried? Because uh, you are one of those who uh, started with this particular administration uh, of uh, President Goodluck Jonathan when he appointed you as interior minister. Mm -hmm. Aren't you worried that his advisors at this point in time are not telling him the truth about the subsidy? Because they fear that if it's finally removed, it just might be the straw. No, it isn't really going to be a destroyer at all. If it is not removed, the government is likely going to go bust. The government requires uh, resources to be able to implement its programs. And the money that is being wasted in the subsidy regime is one source of funding that we have to look very seriously at. I think that the problem that we have had is that people have not really been able to communicate very clearly these positions, and that is why I'm here to tell you about these issues. I've made statements that people would not uh, dare make in the past when I say to you that the subsidy actually has been appropriated by people who it was not intended for. And you can test it by looking at the person who buys it. You, for instance, if you had five cars and you have a common man, he has one space in out of 14 people in a damn four. And you can go on a daily basis and fill up those five cars 60, uh, 100 liters per car, is it equitable? And all he gets is, if you look at the total transport, the total number of uh, people who have uh, traveled in that particular bus in one day, and look at the number of uh, uh, the liters of fuel that has been bought, and then just you know, calculate you know, what he you has know, way into all is of it this. an equitable situation? Uh, 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 so we really need to have a situation that is both equitable, is very efficient in operation, and I think the way that we can do it is to recover that money that is meant for the masses. Yeah, Kevin, and then the sorry, masses me, can, please, they can, uh, they can uh, insist on being Part of the decision-making process just as to me, how that Just allow me to come in here so that we don't lose that. Now you're just talking about the masses. Yes. Uh, what kind of concern do you have for the same masses? Yeah. Knowing that this same man, the ordinary Nigerian, yeah. doesn't even have light, so he doesn't have electricity. On a daily basis, I'm quite sure sometimes is, when, you, when you drive along some petrol station, you see people with a four-liter jerry can, yes. and that's all they can afford, yeah. and maybe once in a week. Mm -hmm. So when you finally take off the subsidy, how do you expect that same man who's uh, always... Uh, in the dark to even get a, a gleam of light in his house through that four liter. You are making that mistake that I've told you people continue to make because all you see is once you take off you take off this uh, subsidy, then that is it. Prices because, will rise. Because again, because it you comes are to management side. Yes, yeah, the, the, it comes to management. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry to button you. Sorry, because I remember then when we talked about uh, uh, the PTF, you know, Petroleum Trust Fund. People could get drugs in the hospitals, in the teaching hospitals we attended then. Yeah. You see, they tell you these are PTF subsidized drugs. So how is this common man likely to get the effect of all of this good that will come out of this removal? It is, the, it, when we say removal, it's not as if we remove it and we throw it out of the economy. What we're saying is actually take it from where it is now and really bring it out uh, in the public domain where we can use it to buy all of these things that the common man does not have. With corruption, we need it to, allow it to thrive? With corru corruption, allow it to thrive? It's a question for me and you. It's not a question for me. When you say, will corruption allow it to thrive? Do you like corruption? I don't like it. So we have to fight it. We have to continue to fight it. All we need to do is to recover that money that is inefficiently applied correctly and now set up the mechanism to ensure that all of these things that the common man was not getting, that he now gets it. Even though prices might rise, and I will deal with the issue of the price rise in a minute, the model that I see uh, post uh, removal of subsidy, that prices will spike. But once prices spike, people will bring in resources. 
When people bring in resources by way of investment, competition will act to bring down that thing down to an equilibrium level. And absolutely, they will just simply bubble at that level for a very long time. The other thing that you can also say is that we are so frightened of this uh, removal of subsidy. It's like it's the end of the world. Don't you but have a reason it, to be frightened? Isn't, isn't no, 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 it, I have no isn't it the end of the world for no, Nigerians, no, the average cannot, Nigerian? No, no, it cannot be. Because look at uh, West Africans to the left of Nigeria, West Africans to the right of Nigeria. They are not enjoying a, a subsidized bunkers and they have not starved to death. The problem is that we, we want everything. We want light. We want uh, infrastructure. We want everything that works. We have to find resources to pay for it. It would be nice if resources co could come from outside. That is one source of uh, funding. But also, it would be nice if we could redirect resources that are within the economy that are currently being inefficiently applied. And that is where this 1.5 trillion will come.